Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Bruce, my friends call me Fluff, and today on Riffs, Beards, and Gear, I show you a cool trick to get your vocal to pop in a mix. So in the YouTube world, there are a lot of tips, a lot of tricks, some good, some not so good, and some dependent on the specific mix situation. Well, today, I'm gonna show you a cool and not groundbreaking trick to kind of getting your vocal to sit in within the context of a mix a little bit better than just using, uh, you know, compression and volume. Now, first, let's start out with the song that we're gonna be working on today. I am in Logic Pro and the song is Terminal Inferno by the band Winterhaven. Shout out to Winterhaven for letting me mix their EP, which is out by the time you see this, out very, very soon at the end of June as this is posted, and I mixed the, the EP, the Carpe Diem EP, and this is a song from that EP. Now on this particular song, they have a guest vocal from my buddy Cove from Dead American and Salesin and Scary Kids Scaring Kids, and we're gonna get his vocal to sit a little bit better than where it's currently at. So first, let me play you, I'm not gonna play you the entire song, but I'm gonna play you the portion with Cove's part in it and let you kind of get a sense of what we are dealing with. So here's my mix as it currently sits right now. Okay, it sounds pretty good, but there's a lot of dynamics in both the vocal and the music. It kind of starts out sparse, and then kind of builds up during the portion of Cove's vocal. Now, the first thing I would normally do is I would do more normal, normal processing and we'll also introduce some automation. Now I'm gonna open up the automation view in Logic and you can see that, that right, whoop, uh, right here in the main bus track, I have a little bit of a volume move to compensate for when the band comes in, right? So let me play that again and you can see and watch right about here the the volume move nothing can save me there's nowhere to run to hide away catching the feeling i'll be stuck here permanently i wish that i lived the life for me i wish that i can't change the air Okay, I think when the band comes in, the vocal could cut a little bit better. There could be a little bit more sonic room for the fundamental of Cove's voice. Okay, so how am I gonna do that? I could add more volume. I could add additional volume and compression. I don't really wanna do that because I like how I have it sounding and there's something else that we can do. So before we go into what we're gonna do, understand that with this particular mix, I have all of the instruments treat up to an instrumental bus, and then I have Cove, uh, a bus for Cove, and then I have a bus for all the other vocals, and then those are going to a vocal bus, right? So when you take away everything else, the routing for everything trees up to, we have an instrumental bus and a vocal bus, and then those two things are what's hitting my master bus, okay? So I can control them and kind of process them independently of each other, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my instrumental bus and I'm going to 
I'm gonna grab an instance of a multi-band compressor. In this case, it's gonna be FabFilter Pro MB. This can be done with any multi-band compressor and even an EQ for that matter. We're gonna go large, I'm gonna make this larger. Um, this can be done with stock plugins. This is nothing crazy. However, we are going to use a side chain to dip a very specific part of the instrumental mix to make room for Cove's vocal. So I'm just gonna click here. This is again, a very kind of wide brush stroke kind of a thing. And we are going to, we're gonna kind of listen for the fundamental. So I just clicked this and made a point and it automatically kind of made a range. So this is a multi-band compressor. So the range I think by default is 6 dB or something like that. We're gonna put that to zero for right now. And I arbitrarily clicked a frequency range. Uh, we're on, you know, 2351, 2K. And I'm going to set the side chain to listen to the input of Cove's vocal bus. Now, what is a side chain? Any side chain is an action that is working by listening to something else, okay? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to dip a little bit of the frequencies in the vocal range of Cove's vocal track while listening to Cove's vocal but we're on the instrumental, right? So we're effectively turning down that little part that his vocal would take over in the sonic space, and we're gonna get the vocal to, to sit a little bit better. Now, I arbitrarily just chose 2351 just by clicking on a point. I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're gonna find out here in just a second. I'm going to, I'm not gonna go too crazy on this. However, on this particular plugin, I'm going to, make sure to tell it to listen to the side chain that I have selected up here in the top right. And I want oversampling on, and my threshold, I don't even know my threshold right now, but we're gonna audition. Audition is gonna let me hear the side chain so we can hear the vocal that is coming into the side chain portion of this frequency range that I've selected, okay? Let's hear this and see how it sounds. about right there, and you also hear a little bit of the snare because I have a little bit of the snare going to the stereo as well, uh, the stereo output. So I'm gonna click off this audition and now we have to decide how much of a dip we want in the instrumental bus. Now we don't want a ton, we can easily overdo it. However, I'm gonna typically start out with a range of I don't know, maybe we're gonna do one and a half dB just to start, and that's that's quite a bit. We're just gonna play it and see how it sounds. Nothing can save me. There's nowhere to run to hide away. Catching the feeling I'll be stuck here permanently. Now, something to note with the multiband, since we're using the multiband compression, is we want the attack to be at its fastest it can possibly go. We don't want any, any delay from the transient of the vocal to then, because it's still gonna get covered up, right? So we want the attack to be as low as possible in this, this particular instance. I'm also gonna make the release as fast as possible as well, because we don't want anything dipped if there's not a vocal there, right? This will affect everything on our our mix or instrumental mix, all right? Let's listen to this again. I'm gonna mess with the threshold and the range, and we're gonna kind of fine tune this. Nothing can save me. There's nowhere to run to hide away. Catching the feeling I'll be stuck here permanently. I wish that I lived a life full of meaning. I wish that I can't change the air. silence. 
You hear that difference? I'm gonna A and B and just turn this on and off. And when the band comes in, you can kind of hear the vocal kind of get covered up quite a bit. And then when I engage the side chain, the Pro MB kind of opens it up real, real nicely just for Cove's vocal. Let's listen one more time. Hear the difference? It also comes in handy with that sn those snare hits coming in when he's at the very tail end of his vocal. This adds just a little bit of glue to both parts without having to go overboard with compression and volume. Um, this is a very, very simple trick that has its other uses in other parts of the mix, but that's a video for another day. And uh, yeah, that is a very simple side chain vocal move that you can use to make a vocal go through your mix. You've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.